Hello, my name's Christopher, and today I'm going to show you how to install Tandor on Portainer. So, a little bit about this series, I'm going over a home lab, so it's all things, getting things set up, everything like that. So, if you're interested in that, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel, and let's get started. I wanted to let y'all know about the Big Bear community. We just launched a uh, community on community.bigbeartechworld.com. It's based on Discourse, so go on there, join it, and uh, say hi. So. Let's get back to your registered programming. So this is what I'll be installing today. It's an application for our managing recipes, planning meals, building shopping lists, and much more. Um, here's the UI for it. And also, um, here's some features. I manage recipes, plan, shopping list, cookbook, share and collaborate. And here's some more features. So, that's what we will be installing today. So, I'm going to start on Big Bear Video Assets. There will be a link down in the YouTube description to get to this. And um, the link will be down in the useful a link section. So, I'm going to go over here to the search. And I'm going to type Tandor. So, how to install Tandor on Portainer right here, and click it. Then I'm going to go in the Docker Compose. So, we're in Bigger Video Assets, and then how to install Tandor on Portainer, and then the Docker Compose. So, now 3.8 of Docker Compose file formats being used. I'm going to set some services, and then the first service underneath the services is called Big Bear Tandor. And this is the service name. So, the container name is going to be called Big Bear Tandor, and this is so Docker doesn't have to generate a random name. And then the image is coming off of GitHub because this ghcr.io right here. And this is the registry. This is the Docker image. And then this is the Docker image tag. The container restart policy is set to unless stopped. So that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails any other reason, then it will try to restart. And then volumes down here. So pick bear t Tandor static files. This is on the host side. And this is the local volume that's defined down the bottom. And then on the container side, opt recipes static files. Do not change the uh, the uh, con container path right here at all. And then on the host side is Big Bear Tandor media files. This is the local volume that's defined down the bottom as well. And then the container path. Um, so now I'm going to set some ports. So 8080 on the host. If this does collide with another port on your host, you can change it to like 8081 or... Uh, so now I'm going to uh, set the 8080 on the container. So do not change the container's port, just like do not change the container path up here either. So now environment variables. So the secret key, I would change this to another secret key if you'd like. Uh, it's a UUI v4. UUID, uh, U, UUID v4. Um, because you can tell that because this 4 right here. And then the DB engine is Postgres QL. Postgres uh, host is set to Big Bear Tandor DB, and that's a, the service name that's defined down here. And then the Postgres port is 5432. And then the Postgres user is Tandor. The Postgres password, and then the Postgres DB. So these environment variables down here should rhyme with these environment variables up here because this service up here, this Big Bear Tandor service, is connecting to the Big Bear Tandor DB right here and storing the data in this uh, database right here. So the network's Big Bear Tandor network, I'm going to set it uh, in its own network because I need the Postgres host up here to be set to the service name. And same goes with this one as well. So... Um, now I'm going to set, it depends on, so Big Bear Tandor DB and the condition is service healthy. So now Big Bear Tandor DB, and this is the service and it's right underneath the services right here. So it's in line with the Big Bear Tandor. So now the image is coming off Docker Hub by default because there's no year before this. This is the Docker image. And then this is the Docker image tag. The container name is going to be set to Big Bear Tandor DB. And like I said, this is so Docker doesn't have to generate a random name. 
And then volumes down here. So Big Bear Tandor PostgreSQL data. This is a local volume that's defined down the bottom. And then on the container side is var lib PostgreSQL data. Do not change the container side. And then the environment variables. And then the restart policy is, is unless stop. So that, that means if you stop it for any reason, it will not try to restart. But if it fails any other reason, then it will try to restart. And then networks, we're, we're going to set it in the same network. So Big Bear Tandor network. And so, uh, this is so this service right here can connect to this service. And then the health check down here. And um, now network a definition. So this is the network. So it's defined down here. Big Bear Tandor network. The, it, it is a bridge network. And then the volume definitions. So this is all the volumes that we used up here. And they are local volumes. So I'm going to go ahead and go up here and copy raw file. I'm going to click it. Then I'm going to go over to my portainer and get this setup installed. So I wanted to let you know uh, about the Big Bear Club. Uh, 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 you can join it and it greatly supports this channel and I very much appreciate it. So uh, if you'd like to join the Big Bear Club, you can go down the YouTube description and uh, go to my Ko-Fi link and join it from there. So let's get back to registered programming. So now I'm going to start on my portainer. I'm going to go to local stacks and then add stack up here. I'm going to put the uh, stack name as Tandor stack. And then, um, so the portainer stacks are just using Docker and pose underneath. Um, so I'm going to go down the web editor. I'm going to paste in the Docker and pose that I explained over in Big Bear Video Assets. And then when you do that, you're going to say deploy the stack. So what this is doing is it's uh, downloading the Docker images off the registries, getting them extracted, get them up with Docker and Pose underneath because this is using the Docker engine. It's also setting up the volumes and the network. So now I'm going to go into Stack, and then I'm going to go to Big Bear Tandor, and then now I'm going to go to Logs. So now you can see it is starting up the mi migrations and migrating everything, and also it's going to have to set up the static files. So... We'll wait for that and then come back. So it migrated all the um, the t uh, tables and columns to the database. And then it also um, started generating the static files right here. And um, then it uh, said files written and then 575 static files copied. And then it said done. So it's now listing on 8080. So that's working. So we got it up and running. So now I'm going to go over Portainer's UI. So you're going to go into Stacks, and then I'm going to go into Stack. So now you see Stack up here, and um, you can see Action. So stop the Stack, delete the Stack, create template from the Stack, Stack Duplication, slash Migration. You can go over here to the Editor, and you can edit to the Docker and Pose file right here. And then you can come down here and update the Stack. So now, if you're using like the latest tag or something, you can repull image and redeploy. If the developer pushes to that latest tag, then you need to repull the image off the registry. Uh, so you can check mark this and then update. So you can uh, see all the containers in this stack, and you can go into each one, and you can have actions right here. So start, stop, kill, re restart, pause, resume, remove, recreate, duplicate, slash edit. And then you can see a container status right here. Logs, great for debugging. Inspect, stats, console, attach, access, control. And then create image, container details. So image, the port configuration on the host is 8080. And then on the container is 8080. So command, entry point, environment variables, and then labels. And then the restart policy. And you can update. So you can see the volumes that this container is using and then the networks that it's connected to. So if you go over to the other one and you go over the DB, it's the same thing. Actions, container status, and logs, and then access control, container health. And this one does have a health on it. Um, create image, container details, image, command, and entry point environment variables, labels, restart policies, and then you can press update, volumes, and then connect to networks. So that's a little bit about Portainer's UI. So now I'm going to go to the UI. 
So Portainer's IP address and then 8080. So I'm going to go to it. So now you're going to put a username in and a password in and then confirm the password. So now the username, password, and then confirm the password that you put in here. So now I'm going to create a super user account. So now I'm going to put the same exact info in here. So the password and then sign in. So now you have two options. You can join space or create space. Since you don't have anything in here, you're going to create space. And now you can import and you can create. So you can go in here and create and you can create a new recipe. So now name, description, preparation time, waiting time, servings, servings text, keywords. You can upload an image, properties, and then uh, additional options like steps. And you can, you can add another step underneath here. Um, you can go ahead and um, go away from this. And you can see it in the recipes right here. You can go into it. You can also search up here and advanced search. You can go to meal plan and a calendar. So create, auto planner, export, and settings. So this is what create would do. And um, the auto planner. And then you can go into shopping and you can put a item in and then there we go and undefined and you can go into here and quick actions, category, postpone, entries, and then add ignore shopping and delete. So you can check mark this off and get rid of it. Uh, recipes, supermarkets, and then share shopping list. Um, you can go into books. And you can go to the plus button and you can create your own new cookbook. And then there we go. Um, and then um, now you can go over here and keyword foods, units, and then supermarket, supermarket category, automations, files, batch edit, history, ingredient editor, export, properties, unit conversion. You can go into plus up here, import recipe, create. You can go over here, settings, external recipes, space settings, external connectors, system, admin, admin space, overview. Um, you can go into system. You can go over here to settings. And you can go into account and search. And um, you can go into shopping list settings, meal plan settings. And then API. So that's a little bit about Tandor's UI. So I just went over step by step on getting Tandor working on Portainer. So if you like this tutorial, subscribe, comment, like, and support the channel. And if you have any video suggestions or any community support, you can go down to the Big Bear community and join our forum. There's a link in the YouTube description. So stay tuned for more.